So I was widowed in 2017. And one dark November evening, about a month after the funeral, I had arrived home from some function. And I noticed for perhaps the third or fourth time that week that the light bulb over our exterior door was burned out. Now, I had, had just had lunch with a friend earlier that week, and I distinctly remember complaining to her about the situation, that the socket was too high, I was too short, that I couldn't remember in all the years of living in that house with my late husband and my sons, that light bulb ever burning out. And she rolled her eyes at me like only a close friend can. And I'll never forget her words. Perhaps, Mary, she said, you've never noticed that light bulb because you've never had to. People have been changing your light bulbs for you your entire life. And I sat in my driveway thinking of her words and doing that half laugh, half cry thing widows are so adept at. And it hit me. I was on my own. And whether I fell flat on my face into my dark foyer was up to me. Now that's a pretty sobering realization for a new widow, but boy, it lit my fire. I sprang out of bed the following morning. I went down to the hardware store. I got this light bulb. I, and I went home and I completed that project. And when I was through, I turned to face three of my neighbors who had obviously stopped to watch me in action, and they smiled at me. And one kind friend yelled out, well done, Mary, and it's nice to see you getting outside. And then they applauded. 30 years of personal and career success, and I was being applauded for having mastered righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. <laughs> um, that story might seem silly now, but at the time it was actually very significant to me. Because it got me thinking about my personal potential. If I could change that light bulb, what else was I capable of? So I started taking risks. If it scared me or made me uncomfortable, I chased it. Physical risks like solo travel and solo dining, interpersonal risks like initiating new friendships, which as any introvert can tell you is terrifying in its vulnerability, and career risks like retiring from my full-time teaching job to focus on my writing. And as my world got bigger, my inner circle, which had been pretty small to begin with, became almost non-existent because no one understood what I was trying to do. I was asking myself, what can I do if I dare to achieve? Society, without intent to harm, unwittingly infantilizes widows. Our ability to communicate clearly and effectively with governmental agencies, financial institutions, and legal offices becomes a daily struggle without our husbands by our sides to be seen and heard and respected. Even when kind and well-meaning friends, and we know they mean well, when they visit us, they encourage us to stay sad, stay quiet, stay indoors, not realizing that pity while feeling pretty good to the pitier is toxic and dangerous to the pitied. But they bring us numbing devices, things like cheesecake and vodka and books with self-defeating titles like, it's okay to not be okay. Right? Now, all widows have read these books. We all know the rules. I'll share a few with you. Don't take your ring off for a year. Don't sell personal real estate. Don't use the insurance money to redecorate your living room. Don't quit your job. And above all else, don't forget, it's okay to not be okay. Well, those books went right into my trash can next to the cheesecakes. And I proceeded to sell personal real estate, quit my job, and use that insurance money to redecorate my living room. <laughs> I had just spent 30 years as a mother, wife, and caretaker following society's rules. It was my turn. My turn to step outside of my comfort zone and ask myself, what can I do if I dare to fly? Widows, much like most people, sometimes feel minimized by societal stereotypes. 
put the word widow into any stock image search bar, and two types of images pop up of hot young women in tight black dresses staring seductively into the camera, or of despondent older women gazing vacantly into space from their kitchens or park benches. And it occurred to me that according to society, a widow has two choices, slut or spinster. <laughs> Google widow Halloween costumes and there's two options can wear a shapeless black dress and a black veil, or a skin-tight pleather jumpsuit like the kind Black Widow wears in the Marvel movies. Slutter spinster. Now, with all due respect to Black Widow, who happens to be my favorite Marvel character, it doesn't seem fair. Even Barbie has more than two wardrobe choices. We're stuck in black, she's flying to the moon in a pink flight suit. In 1985, Barbie launched her We Girls Can Do Anything campaign encouraging young girls all over the world to believe in themselves and their dreams. And even when she and Ken split in 2004, we never doubted her abilities to accomplish her goals. She's a lucky girl. There are approximately 258 widows worldwide. And in the United States alone, women make up 11 million of the 13 million bereaved spouses. Statistically, women are much more likely to be widowed than men and much less likely to remarry. The gender gap in later life for marriage centers around one adage which you may not be familiar with, but it's very familiar in widow circles. Women mourn, men replace. The implication's pretty clear. Bereaved women are expected to mourn the loss of their irreplaceable husbands, while widowed men easily find a companion to take the place of their late wives. Now I've spoken to a lot of widows in the last five years. We all agree on one thing. Of course we miss our spouses, but we dare to enjoy our lives. So we have to ask ourselves, if it is statistically proven that happiness and life satisfaction are functions of the discrepancy between what one has and what one wants, what if we were to dare to be happy with what we have rather than what society tells us to want? But I want to be very clear, standing alone is never easy there are days I wake up and just wish I did not have to be the one in charge of these light bulbs. Standing alone is tough. But an interesting thing happens. Every day you wake up, you are stronger than the day before. And you realize that with every victory you win, no matter how small it may seem at the time, like a light bulb, you have become tougher to vanquish. And it is this toughness that is often a widow's greatest vulnerability which ultimately manifests as her greatest strength. So I say, what if we were to declare victory? June 23rd is International Widows Day, and widows all over the world have to remember that we are powerful beyond measure. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get lucky and Mattel will create a line of widow Barbies. Barbies always known the deal. We girls can do anything. Thank you.